Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbis Samawati Wal Ardi Alimil Asrar Alimil Asrar Wal Khafiyyati Ahata Bikai Bikulli Shayin Alima نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وقرشينا ومدنينا وهاشمينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونزيرا وآتاه جوامع الكلم ومنابع الحكم ووعده مقاما محمودا وجعله سراجا منيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فقد قال الله عز وجل في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد رضي الله عنهم وردوا أنه قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تمسكوا بسنة خلفاء الراشدين المحدين تمسكوا بها وعدوا عليها بالنوادس أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام وفي حديث آخر هو قال تردت فيكم أمرين الصامت والناتك صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسول النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين. My dear respected علماز حفاظ دعات ناد خان قل أزرات and the Muslims of UK. I thank the management committee of Azmat Sahaba Conference and will خصوص Hazrat Allama Imdadul Hasan Sahab Nomani who gave me an opportunity to stand up in front of you and say few words on the topic of the virtues and the value of the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as you are aware in within our company there are great scholars also shuyukhs also great international debaters like Dr. Allama Khalid Mahmood sahab as well who will address the audience shortly inshallah so remain seated till the end as you are aware that in the holy quran there are three topics which are of fundamental status number one tawheed monotheism to believe in the oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty that is also very important in this time and tense and era. People are saying, and even the youngsters, because of the thoughts of the shaitan making house in their minds and in their heart, they are saying there is more than one God. You should call not only Allah, you should call other gods and Allah. So therefore, the young generation should be taught by the parents and the ulamas, asatidat as well in the mosque, the oneness, the monotheism, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. Because the kalima to tawheed, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. It consists of two sets. Number one is there is none worthy of worship except Allah. 
So in order to strike, we have to have the positive and negative in order to bulb to the light. In order for the bulb to light, you need the positive wire as well and the negative wire as well. Then you'll get the light. So we can't deny the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. This is our root and the base of our aqidah of Islam. If that goes, you are no longer Muslim. If the second one you reject, we see the Muhammadul Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then also we are out of the religion of Islam and there is hell for us. So, my dear respected elder brothers, younger brothers and sisters in Islam, don't regard the aqidah as, as non valuable because upon this the base and the foundation and the root of Islam is based upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, He has blessed us by creating us as humans, but not only that, out of the humans, He has made us and created us amongst the believers of the religion of Islam, which means that He has gifted us with a great gift that is known as the Iman. To pass this gift of Iman to us, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his companions, the Ashab Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een, and the Tabi'een and the Tabi Tabi'een, and our respected shuyukhs and the ulamas, or thank you scholars, they went through great effort to pass this gift of Iman to us. So try not to lose it, what is there? No matter if you are a doctor, no matter if you are a millionaire businessman, no matter if you are an accountant, no matter whatever you are, but if this gift of Iman is missing, then you have not achieved your goal. This is the alarm and the peace. Al-lazina amanu wa lam yalbisu imanum bi zulmin, ulaika lahumul amnu wa hum muhtadun. Those who are the holders of this Iman are the ones who are rightly guided and on the guidance and they are the successful. So make sure that try not to create politicism, create partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. We have seen many uh, programs on YouTube, on WhatsApp as well that people are becoming Christians from Islam to Christianity. From Islam to Baha'ism, from Islam to Qadianism, what's going on? People are not, the students, the youngsters are not willing to listen to the parents or the Asatida. They think that these are very old people, not realizing that the shaitan and the evil powers are depriving them from the Iman upon which the whole root of the Islam is based upon. So my dear respected elder brothers and younger brothers in Islam, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have said in his hadith that taraktu fikum amrain as-samitu wa natik the root of our, of our religion, the foundation and the base is three things. What he leaves behind, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taraktu fikum amrain as-samitu wa natik the Quran and his sunnah and taraktu fikum this is the Zameer of Jama Muttakallim Hazir. It means the Sahaba. So the car has a body and the body of the car is the companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the headlamps of the car. One is the Quran and the other one is the Sunnah. So after him he's saying that in order to qualify for better future and to gain entrance into the paradise we and our youngsters yet to come till the day of judgment we have to uphold the rope of Allah and the rope of success and the line of guidance which is these three things so if the Islam is a whole circle in a center and the center of that circle is the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him himself then the circle which formed around it is the body which is the companions of the Holy Prophet Wasallam, the body of Islam and the Quran and the Sunnah. So we can have only one center in a circle. 
So you say, you say to the Baha'is, you say to the Qadianis, you say to the Parwezis, you say to the Hindus and Sikhs that sorry we have no space in our circle because this is the whole uh, circle which forms around a center and is the whole of Islam and these are the three things so we have already a center so we can't have two centers in a circle so bye bye so what is the meaning of Sahabi? Sahabi it means Sahabat to be with someone companionship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty made Ustad Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the teacher of the rightly guided companions, the Caliphs, the Ashab Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in. They were there to see Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he taught them, how to go about it in all daily life of theirs and to pass the message of his to us because we were not present in this. So when our amal is rightly traced back, it goes to the companions of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the first companions among the men was Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who embraced Islam. Then from the women, Hazrat Khadidatul Qubra radiallahu ta'ala From child, Hazrat Ali al murtada radiallahu ta'ala So within the, and Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala he was the 40th upon whom the killah was completed who entered the Fort of Islam. He was the 40th number. In the region of Islam, there are different categories, virtues and value, in within the companions, in companions themselves as well. All the companions were not Hafiz. All the companions were not Mufassir. They were also ordinary Sahabis as well. And they were not, especially in the field of Ahadis, they were not Amirins. Uh, there were not many Sufis. But, what is a Sahabi? Sahabi is whether you are small, underage or bigger in age. You go into the company of the Prophet Wasallam, you will sit within his circle, listen to what he says, and you accept what he says from your heart, from your mind, from your body, from your soul, with your lisan, with your tongue. And he sees you and you embrace Islam on his hand, and you die with the man, then you are the greatest person of all, whom Allah has gifted as the companion, the Sahabi, of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa So those who migrated, who were first in Makkah, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was addressing them about he himself and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, so those kuffars as well who came for Hajj from Medina Ivan the Ansar to Makkah and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave them the voice of the guidance and placed in front of them who he was and who Allah is. And when they accepted this uh, da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those sahabis, including Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali, and all the other sahabas who have embraced Islam in Makkah as well in the beginning, and also from Medina who migrated or went for Hajj, and they embraced Islam, these sahabas um, are known as the top categories of Sahaba, the top quality Sahabas. Because they were less in numbers, they had to go through great struggles. Because they have accepted Islam. So many others were rude to them, even their relatives. But they upheld the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, and the teaching of the Sayyidina Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those who are known as Wasabikun al awwaluna min al muhadrin wal ansar So these group of the Sahaba who embraced Islam in the beginning according to the Quran and by the tongue of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they are known as the top quality of Sahabas. Number two, the ashab e Badriyin. After migrating two years from Makkah to Medina, then all of a sudden there was a war without any preparation and the war took place in which the 313 ashab known as the ashab e Badriyin took part. So in Bukhari Sharif, Imam Bukhari has also pressed a bab, saying the Babu Asma al Badriyin in Kitabul Maghazi. So these are the second category of top quality Sahabas who went to war, Alhamdulillah, give them success in those 313. So according to the Ahadis, if you will read their names 
and make dua Allah accepts your dua as well. If you keep the names in the house, Allah protects your house from many things. So it's mentioned in Kitabul Magadi with Babu Asmail Badriyin. So it holds great virtue. Then the third category of the Ashab Ridwanullahi Amalai Majma'i is when in the sixth year of our Hijrah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw a dream and he loved to go to Makkah for Hajj. So he went with 1,400 companions for Hajj, but unfortunately he was denied the visa. So they came back and rested in the jungle. He sent Hazrat Usman Ta'ala Anhu because in order to speak with this kind of people, the infidels, it's not easy. You have to have qualities and how to approach this and how to get around your work. So Hazrat Usman Ta'ala Anhu was chosen. But he tried in vain, still the visa was not granted and then he was held there in Makkah. So false news was given to Prophet and his companions who were resting in the jungle that he was martyred. So Prophet and the companions took bait on the hands of Prophet under a tree. So that is known as the Bait al Rizwan. The Bait of the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, that they vowed to kill all the infidels who killed Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Even though it's false news, but they were fully prepared. So Allah liked this bed of theirs in order to combat the evil forces, even though it was false news, to take revenge upon those of the false news that Hazrat Usman was murdered. So Allah liked this bed under that tree. لَقَدْ رَيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اِذْيُبَعِيُونَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ so therefore did bait of this companion of the Prophet was liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty. So this bait was known as the happy bait of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty. That's why Allah has mentioned in the Holy Quran. So these are the third category of values and virtues of the Sahaba Ikram Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'i. So as I said, some were mufassirin, some were muhaddisin, some were faqih, someone who compiled the Quran, some memorized the Quran. But even if we have a small Sahabi, even those who are Nabaliks, who are under the age and they saw Prophet and they were in company of the Prophet they are also known as Sahabi and Rasul. The ordinary Sahabi of the Prophet no matter if he is not half his Mufassir or Faqih, whatever, we cannot reach his status because he was within the company of the Prophet This is why we see that the foundation of the spirituality, spirituality is to create a sort of contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty in the prayers with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty which is known as the zikr the diyan. The sahabas also gave the same zakah, they fasted the same with same rules and regulation, they went for hard with the same rules and regulation, they were same in the rules and regulation of the wuzu, there is no difference. So how come these companions of the Prophet ﷺ are so high in value and status that even the Imam Abu Hanifa, even Junaid Baghdadi, even those great scholars of Islam and great Sufi whose taqbir ullah was not for, even they cannot get to the status of an ordinary Sahabi. So why they are so great in value and status? Because the nigah mustafi the eyes of the Prophet ﷺ focus on them, their body, their mind and their soul and their heart. So it cleans them out internally, externally from all shirk and all zank of the world that their concentration and the dhyan was so powerful in the namaz and the prayer that we can, no, nobody can beat in the world today. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty is saying that Allah Allah fi ashabi la tattaqizum gharadam min baadi man ahabbahum fa bi hubbi ahabbahum fa man ghab ab ghadam fa bi bughdi ab ghadahum fa man azaum fa qad azani fa man azani fa qad azallah fa yushiku an yaakhuzahu wa khayru al-quruni qalni thumma al-ladheena yalunum thumma al-ladheena yalunum Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have mentioned in the hadith that Allah Allah fi ashabi never lay a tongue, never lay a hand or a finger upon my companions Never use any blasphemous language or swear at my companions. If you love me, then you have to love my companions of the Holy Prophet. So my dear respected younger brother and elder brother in Islam, from which tongue, 
we are listening to this saying in all the khutbas in all the world of the mosque in all the world in every mosque from the tongue of Sayyidina Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so therefore if you think that you are a believer and you have an Iman then you have to love the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam otherwise your Iman is not there because they are body of the Islam they are the governors of Islam they are our Iman they are our faith as you have seen read in the story of Sayyidina Yusuf and Yaqub Allah Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam when the father and son separated for so many years with a lengthy gap for 40 years and after the 40 years the father hears the news that oh dad your son uh, Yusuf Joseph is alive not only that all the black and white which means the gold and silver is beneath him he is the ruler of Egypt and Misr but by listening to these worldly words Yaqub Allah Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam also was the prophet of that time he had the basira he did not show any sign of happiness on his face but straight away he said what religion is my son on so then they replied that he is on the same religion as Dina Adam Dina Ibrahim Dina Yaqub then he said now the gift is complete that my son's iman is safeguarded so when Joseph met his father, he said, why you cried so much that you lost your sight? There was no need for you that because met in the life hereafter. But he said, no, if you are not on the leader of Adam, if you are not on Dina Alif, Dina Shalam, Dina Yaqub, then of course we would have departed on the day of judgment as well we would not have met. So my dear respected elder brother, younger brother in Islam, in this time in tension era, when we are facing big problems, there are great problems within the house, in locality throughout the world that we are being thumped with shaitanic thoughts with materialistic life we are leaving the quran and the sunnah and the companions whom are the body of the islam we are leaving this sitting behind so our iman is fading and we are falling into the death valley of the sins and jahannam so these conferences are there as an awareness for our young generation yet to come till the day of judgment that be aware don't fall prey for the shaitan and his lashkar his army which is your soul and the lust and the desires of the soul which is the army of the soul <coughs> when you will fall prey for these things then you will drop into the death valley of sins and you will be deprived from your iman and you will rot in hell we will cry the tears of blood the time is still there yet. Wake up. This is an awakening call. These conferences are designed in order to give you information practically, spiritually, to make you understand the importance of this word Iman, which is the peace. You are the holders of peace. Once this is gone, you have achieved nothing. You have big cars like Rolls Royce. You have big mansion, big cash and carries. But what's the use? Your son is Christian. Your son is Kafir. Your son is an infidel. He has rejected all this, what Allah has given which was the peace. So therefore, my real respected younger brothers, the elder brothers in Islam, these conferences, the masajid, the madaris, the majalis of zikr, to sit within the companies of the shuyukh in order to cleanse your mind and the heart, internally and externally, is greatly needed. And it is a voice of Islam to wake up before it's too late, before you shed the tears of blood and it's happening i have seen it myself i have been to thousands of homes in 20 years trying to solve problems for the family and i cry sometimes when i see the situation this day why this is happening because the quran is not there sunnah is not there the body of the islam this habas is not there this is why radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an this is a dua for the companions of the holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam you should sacrifice a goat on behalf of the great companions as well and all the companions as well because that will get uh, get you closer to them on the day of judgment also you should read zikr and askar as well so therefore these conferences and all the activities of islam are forming security and a ladder for our young generation yet to come so if they are deprived from the Iman by wrong thoughts, by wrong approach and by uh, divisional faces and confusional faces, then what should, what should they do? So they should return to the base and the root of Islam, which is the three things. When you will come upon this and understand, in the home, when you go there, 
make them review paragraphs of Hayat al-Sahaba and Sahabiyat. So Sahabi is a companion of the Holy Prophet for women is Sahabiyat, Sahabiyat. So radiyallahu anhu for the man, radiyallahu anha for women. So these groups of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, are special in value and virtue. They are given special status by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. They have maqam a gifted status from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, the Creator, and they went through examination, and they were successful. So they are known to us as our clarification and our certification, our son that we have a son. If you will remove them, then that's it. You will fall prey for many different phases of Islam and you will follow the line of the shaitan and you will leave the line of the guidance which is of the Adina Salat al Mustaqim. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty that we make sure that within this time and era when the fitna, the problem is rising day by day, like the rain drops from the skies, what shall we do? Where shall we return to? So stay in within the majlis of the scholars. Because in the Zikr al-Salihin, uh, Tanzeel al-Rahman, in Merkat, the Shara.